And if you'll do me one small favor now that you're in there, just place your head here, your hand over here, your other hand down there, and of course your foot in the bottom. You've done this before. Oh, no, this is our first time. Right. Now, Didi, I need you to do one more thing. Just close your eyes there. Go to a deep trance and then relax if you would. Stay totally relaxed and you shouldn't feel a thing. Right. Now, as all of you can see, blades are real. Stay totally relaxed. Yay! Watch where you put that thing. <laughs> Did I say you won't feel a thing? <laughs> Maybe I should have said it shouldn't hurt too much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, how about for a second play?
Slip slide. All right. Are you ready for this? You are. Ladies, are you ready? We're ready. All right, well, then let's hit it.
and that is the end of my performance. And I want to invite you back to WC Jackal. Yeah, yeah. You mean where's Sally? Well, that's right. I don't know. I almost forgot about this. Where is she?
wait a minute. How did I get here? Who are you? I'm the magician. Took me back for the wall. Okay. Reading a magazine and you interrupted. I'm supposed to produce a rabbit, but uh, I think I've been malfunctioned. Something about this case. It's was I got it at yard sale and they said it would had some faulties in it. So uh, I didn't know. You got to show the fault. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Do something better here. I hope so. Man, can't please anybody. I'm missing my soap opera. What is it? How to kill a magician. I need to get rid of this guy bad. I'd, I'd be glad to make you disappear. Well, what? I mean, um, I made you disappear, and I made you just reappear um, uh, after the show, and uh, you, th you think you'd give me a drink. Well, you took me out of my room, and I don't know where the heck I was. So you could yourself. Well, be a fine leave then. All right. Be that way. I'll give you a drink. Abra cadaver. All right. Okay. Be that way. Uh, just keep figuring out. I'm gonna figure this out. All right, stuff. Are you counting to six yet? My drink. Well, we haven't got together to arrange any of this, have we? No, no. In fact, we met only by your friend, Phil, right? Yes. In fact, I've just started that. Uh -huh. Do you believe I can make it disappear? I'm pretty much sure you can. Let's try. All right. Stop. Still stand here. Where am I? Where am I? Now I'm 
close his door and hopefully to produce someone, I don't know who, all right? Or, as I was saying, I don't know who, but I think I should produce someone, all right? Come out. All right, now, pause it. It's empty. All right, now, I think I'll produce another person. For some reason, David pops in mind. So, as you see, this is empty, and I'm going to close it. All right, now pause it. And hopefully, I think we've got another person. And, uh, uh, We're going to make the magician disappear. Yes, right in here. In an empty box. Yes, the magician now will disappear. What is this? I will see you in San Francisco. Now, as you see, the box was empty. And he's gone. Turn the lights on. I'll put it closed. Now I'll make you weird. Okay. Someone's knocking on the door. It's me. For some reason, I got this soap opera script, and, uh, as you see, it's this guy I disappeared. Somehow, I just messed up. I don't know what I'm doing with this book. I mean, and one minute I'm gone, and now, I'm, and when I'm gone somewhere, I'm doing some kind of soap opera, but it ain't mine, it's, they think, they think I'm him, you because know, I got the book, and I'm supposed to apply. It was him that was supposed to apply. It's his book or something. I got his book, and it's all confusing. And I came back, and I still have it in my hand. I'm forgetful me. I had to take it with me for this time warp or whatever. And uh, I guess I read it, but um, um, if I can see me from my hand, don't hit me in the shoulder. Uh, uh, what? I'm supposed to do something right. Now, now, hand. Stop that. <laughs> I can't control his hand, can I? I, I, I? What is he trying to do? To stab me? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait. I'm doing a trip back, back, back. Now take hold of this, all right? We're supposed to be what? I, you know, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, I can't. Uh, uh, this arm wrestle. Oh, well, I, now, will you stop that? Now, hold on. What about the, ah, wake me up, nightmare, there's three of us. <laughs> put up your other hand. That ain't going to work. Oh, I got four hands linked with that one. I feel like, what's the McCall? Da, 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 an ordinary cape, holding it with both hands, the stick is moving while I want it to. I'm looking at it, moving in a couple of eyes. Alright, now I'm going to get ready for my next trick. Float up out of nowhere, just by thinking of it. Well, it's parts of baloney, the near salami, the actual.
Actually, I think you just, it's time for you to go. Maybe your, your act is not, not, is not ready to take what it needs to go that. on the road. Well, just for that, I'm going to have to make you disappear. I'm sorry, but, you know, I mean, all right, actually, you take a punch at me. disappear and he thought to take a punch at me anyway and uh instead you popped up but why did he bring you up just because i, I made him finish he made you take over the idea uh he fed me over he knew i was a magician now it's my turn to make you disappear not like that like the last episode in another tape it's gonna be different i'm gonna take this my hands are absolutely empty, you can see that. All right, I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna literally stuff it in my fist. Stuff it in there real good, mix it in there for good luck. And then, as you can see, it is gone. My hands are absolutely empty. Now watch, I'm gonna reach in, snap my fingers, and just pull out the handkerchief. One more time, I'm gonna make it disappear. I'm gonna take it and stuff it in my fist, just in case you need to catch it last time. Stuff it in there real good, and I just seem to make it disappear. All hands empty. Give me a close up shot. My hands are empty. My hands are right here. Uh, 
David Copperfield has amazed the whole world with his legendary illusions. Last year, David traveled halfway around the globe to astound us as he walked through the Great Wall of China. The first of his spectacular illusions had us on the edge of our seats as he vanished a jet airplane completely surrounded by a ring of spectators. And millions tuned in along with a live audience on Liberty Island to witness the largest illusion ever performed as David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear. But it's not only the grand illusions that we see on television that keep us mesmerized. David's theatricality and flair for the dramatic are equally evident on the legitimate stage. And coming from a Broadway background myself, I can guarantee you 
that what you witness here tonight in front of a live audience with no camera tricks is the perfect example of what happens when the master of illusion blends the drama of theater with the mystery of magic. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Copperfield. pounds of steel and spikes connected to a single rope. In a few moments, I'll be here, chained and handcuffed to the table below the spikes. The only thing holding up those spikes is this rope. But this rope is going to be set on fire. It takes 90 seconds for the rope to burn through. I'll have 90 seconds to make my escape before this. I need a volunteer from the audience. <laughs> Actually, I need two volunteers, and we have them, from the Los Angeles Police Department. Hello, gentlemen. Why don't you step around the table? Help me remove the box. Once the box is off, examine the spikes. Make sure they're solid, that they don't break away, that they're sharp. Again, the rope will be set on fire with this torch. 90 seconds later, the rope will burn through and the spikes will fall. Examine the spikes. They uh, look good to you? Solid as a rock. We have also examined the handcuffs or a chain. How did you find them to be? These are real handcuffs. Put them on. David is being locked in regulation police handcuffs and leg shackles. Locks have been sealed with wax to prevent them from being opened, even by a key. Is everything secure? Secure. Thank you both very much. David is being locked to the table by 15 feet of tempered steel chain. The chain is being threaded through the rings welded to the table, then is locked to the floor with padlocks. chain padlocked to the floor. The sealed handcuffs are locked around his wrists. Once the torch starts burning through the rope, he'll be on a 90-second race for death.
One of the great things about doing a show like this is to come out here and just, um... <laughs> Webster. This is my, uh, this is my pet duck, Webster. Come here, Web. <laughs> He's jogging. <laughs> he flies. <laughs> Look at that head action. <laughs> he flies backwards. <laughs> we found that Webster here... Stop that. <laughs> we found that Webster here has a brand new talent that we never knew about. We found that Webster is a death-defying duck. Are you ready, Webster? <laughs> Webster swallows swords! Thanks a lot, Duck. I see, I see. We're going to have to... <laughs> ...prove to you that Webster is a death-defying duck. Webster will be blasted out of this cannon, through this ring of paper, into this empty cage of brass. He will do this without a net. He might do it with Frankie Avalon, but he won't do it with a net. You're very kind. <laughs> Get in, Webb. <laughs> he loves this. I got an idea. I got an idea. Let's bank him in. Doing magic and escapes requires the same kind of physical training and mental discipline that it takes to become a dancer. Things that look very simple often take years of practice and complete concentration. The next illusion is just such a piece. Because of the danger involved, it took me two years to master what you're about to see. We call it On the Edge.
asked me to stress to you that what you just saw was a very dramatic illusion and I emphasize the word illusion a stunning effect created by sophisticated magical technology it also contains a tremendous degree of danger and no attempt to recreate this or other effects should even be considered David felt it necessary to tell you this because tonight you're going to witness his most daring illusion ever David Copperfield Blue's magic You'll find money-saving craft coupons featuring fine products from our TV special recipes. Thank you very much. I need to find a lady from the audience tonight, and I'm going to do that by throwing this rose three times. I'm going to throw it the first time. Whoever catches it will throw it again, and then whoever catches it that time will throw it one more time. The lady closest to the rose will help me with this next experiment. Here we go. Good. Keep the throw. Go for distance. Incredible distance there. Go ahead, any direction you want. Good job. Okay, I guess the lady in the pink. Come right this way. Come right this way. Give her a big hand as she comes up here. Right there. Hello. What is your name? My name's Rachel. Rachel, Rachel, have we ever met before? No, we haven't. You sure? I'm sure. $10,000 to anybody that can prove that what you're about to see is being accomplished with any prearrangement or setup between Rachel and myself. We've not met before, right? That's right. Come with me. Rachel, I have a blackboard back here. It's covered with a piece of fabric, but I've written something on it I don't want you to see just yet. But I'm going to leave it in full view, covered, hanging there in the air. Rachel, all I ask you to do is sit down right here. And uh, look straight at me. I know that's tough. <laughs> and think of any city in the entire world. It doesn't have to be a major city. Just any city whatsoever. What is it? Waukegan. Waukegan? Okay. Now, in your vision, in Waukegan, what month is it in Waukegan? December. 
December? December in Waukegan. Now, imagine for a second that you and I are on a date. Uh. <laughs> in Waukegan in December. What... What is our activity? What are we doing? Actually, what are you wearing? Fur coat. A fur coat? That's it? <laughs> and what else? What color boots? Black. Black boots, okay. A fur coat and black boots. We'll leave it just there. <laughs> and on our date, what is our activity? What are we doing? Keep it clean. <laughs> We're taking a walk, a walk along the lake. We're taking a walk along the lake. And uh, what's the name of the lake? Michigan. Lake Michigan in Waukegan. Oh, that makes sense. And at the end of our dates, we kiss goodnight. What is the address where we kiss goodnight? What are the numbers? 95. 95. Name of the street. Jackson. 95 Jackson Street. Can you hear him? Now, Rachel, we have not met before, right? That's right. And we haven't set this up. And, uh, in fact, no one spoke to you before the show to set this up, right? Right. In fact, you were selected by a rose, which thrown around the audience. It could have landed anywhere. It landed right by you. You're probably thinking that you came up with what you thought of over there, independent from me, that I had nothing to do with it, right? Right. Well, the fact of the matter is, I did have something to do with it. Before the show, I also had a vision of my own. I wrote it down on this blackboard, and I've been attempting to send that image to you. You believe me? <laughs> oh, yeah? Would you like me to prove it to you? Mm -hmm. okay. It was Waukegan in December. I met a girl in a fur coat with black boots. We were taking a walk along Lake Michigan, and we kissed goodnight at 95 Jackson. You know, one of the great things about doing a show like this is to connect. <laughs> Webster, Webster, you're not supposed to be out here on stage, Webster. You can't just come walking out here whenever you feel like it. You do this every show you come out here on stage like this. We're going to have to teach you a lesson. Do we have it? Well, bring it out here. Bring it out here. I'm very lucky because I just happened to bring along with me today my duckomatic. <laughs> it's a duck buster. <laughs> Get in, Web. Duck, duck. Notice the rollers in the front? <laughs> parts is parts. Time to go on a kid hunt. What is your name? Matthew. Matthew? You're married? No. Matthew, would you like to learn how to become a magician? No. Perfect, Matt, perfect. Come with me, Matt. Stand right here, stand right here. Because we're going to dress you up like one anyway. Put this on, put this on. Head up, head up. Good. That's a dicky. Got my old coat, my old coat, put it on, put it on. One sleeve, wrong sleeve, there you go. Other sleeve. Good, nice fit, Matt. Got this hat for you, Matt. Head up, head up. Big smile, big smile. Good, now. Matt, uh... Good, now. 
Matt, if you want to learn how to be a magician, you got to think about a lot of things. It's not just tricks, Matt. It's show business. Show business. Look out there. Think. Bright lights. <laughs> a little brighter, Matt. Good. Think. Music. You got soul, Matt. Now think of the two things you'd like to have around you more than anything else in the whole wide world. I like the way you think, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt, you like show business, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time to move into the illusions, Matt. This is an illusion, Matt. This is the box. When I was your age, this is the box I used to produce old girlfriends for myself in. <laughs> and it's absolutely, positively empty. Check it out, Matt. Check it out. Get back over there, Matt. Good, good, good. <laughs> Stay there. I'm going to close up the box, but don't touch the door, okay? Stay there. Don't move. Don't touch the door. Very important the box remains shut for this trick to work. Because one of the great things about doing a show like this, to come out here and just, uh... <laughs> Matt, maybe you didn't understand. Don't touch the box, okay? Stay there, don't move. Don't touch the box. Very important the box remains shut. You know, stay there, don't move. Stay there, don't touch the box. Very important the box remains shut for this trick to work. Because one of the great things about doing a show like this, to come out here and just... <laughs> Why that smile of her face, Matt? <laughs> Matt, I'll tell you what, Matt. Uh, here, give me your hands. I want you to put a hand here. Put a hand right here. Good. Put another hand right here. Good. Good. Freeze. Very important the box remains shut for this trick to work. Because one of the great things about doing a show like this is going to be He broke my box. Man, you broke my box. Okay, what, Matt? I got an idea. Why don't you step inside the box? Good. Step inside the box. Good. See if you can fix it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very lucky because I just happened to bring along with me today my boy Omatic. <laughs> it's a kid buster. I think you're the greatest magician I've ever seen in my life. Thanks, Matt. Matt. Where's Matt's mom? Now, who in the audience would like to see Matt and Webster restored to their three-dimensional selves? Now, now, who in the audience would like to see Matt and Webster remain flat as a pancake for the rest of their lives? Why is Matt's mom applauding?
Tonight, in front of a live audience with no camera tricks, David is going to continue his tradition of spectacular illusions. David Copperfield is going to attempt... inescapable prison in the world. Tonight, for the first time ever, I'm going to try the challenge that no criminal mind was able to overcome. Using techniques of magic and illusion, with no camera tricks, I'm going to attempt to escape from Alcatraz. Inside those walls were the most dangerous criminals the world has ever known. Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly. They were a breed of lawbreaker that couldn't be held by an ordinary prison. The best escape artist the world has ever known. And in Alcatraz, they met their escape-proof match. Seven men died, five disappeared, trying to get off this island. But no one ever escaped from Alcatraz. Alcatraz became a national recreation area after its closing in 1964. But for 29 years, it maintained a perfect record as the most escape-proof prison on Earth. I've invited a committee of former Alcatraz correctional officers to join me here tonight, in addition to officers currently employed at other prisons around the country. Their job is to inspect the prison and to verify that the bars, the cells, the prison itself is still as escape-proof as it ever was. This is Frank Heaney, a correctional officer here from 1948 to 1951. He guarded over the likes of Machine Gun Kelly and Robert Stroud, the birdman of Alcatraz. Frank, who stayed in that particular cell? Alvin Creepy Carpets, public enemy number one. Who caught him? J. Edward Hoover, former director of the FBI. He caught him himself? Yes, he did, personally. Now, how is that self-constructed? What is it made of? Well, the walls are made out of eight-inch concrete. The dimensions are five by seven by nine. The bars are made out of two resistant steel. Uh, meaning what? Meaning that if you took a blade and started to cut through, there's a round bar inside that would slide back and forth, so it's impossible to get through. Now, supposing an inmate had a, a key inside, would he be able to get out? No, he wouldn't. There are no locks on these doors. How are they controlled? By the control center at the other end. Oh, what are they doing now? They're putting a, a bar around the cell door. Yes, they're putting up a, a steel bar to make sure that the doors cannot slide open. So even if you pulled the lever there, what would happen to the door? Uh, the door would jam, and it would be even be tighter than it is right now. It would be impossible to get through. The correctional officers will follow me with these remote-controlled cameras. They've been placed along my only possible path to freedom. There are cameras mounted in the hallways, the cut-off areas, and even behind me in this cell. The officers will be watching from these monitors outside the prison. We've also invited a live audience to join the officers outside the prison to witness my attempt to escape. In addition, there's a handheld camera and a helicopter prepared to do an aerial search of the island. If I'm able to escape from the prison itself, this camera will go up in the helicopter and try to trap me from above. To make it a little tougher, they've also brought their dogs. These two attack Dobermans. They have been trained to my center and will have a free run of the island. My final goal is to get past the officers and dogs outside and completely off the island. Now, to give me a little extra motivation, I've asked the Department of the Interior for permission to place timed explosives throughout the prison. They agreed with a few conditions. One being that the UC Berkeley Police Bomb Squad set the explosives so that there would be no structural damage to the prison itself. This is Leroy Pereira of the Police Bomb Squad. Sir, what did you bring with you? Dave, as you know, we brought a large quantity of high explosive attached to blasting caps and timers. Well, what are they capable of doing? Well, we have set up a demonstration in another part of the prison. You'll see that the explosion won't destroy the bars or concrete. But anything living in a close proximity will be killed by the bomb. I know a lot of people at home will probably think that these explosives are fake or that they're a special effect. So tell them, please, what you brought. We brought real explosives. Now, there was one other condition we had to meet to use these explosives. It was insisted upon that I had a way of stopping the detonation. If I should get trapped, 
I can defuse the explosion and stop the timer by pushing this button. Although I appreciate everyone's concern for my welfare, I'm going to try my best not to go anywhere near that button. Now, gentlemen, have you examined that straitjacket thoroughly? Yes, I have. Is it yes. unusual in any way? Not that I can see, no. This straitjacket is made of triple-stitch canvas with uh, straps and buckles riveted and sewn down the back. The sleeves are sewn shut at the ends. Gentlemen, strap me in as tightly as possible. Okay. Yes, that's tight. Now, while they do that, I'm going to review what I have to accomplish here. First, free myself from the straitjacket and escape from the cell before the explosives go off in three minutes. Then, I'll go through the locked cutoff area with the second explosive set to go off in six minutes. From there, I'll have to make my way through a storage room with a third timed explosive set to detonate in seven minutes. If I get that far, I'll need to go through the door, past the correctional officers and dogs outside, and escape completely off the island. Gentlemen, are the straps as tight as possible? Yes, yes, they are. Let me shut. Now, you've examined the prison. Did you find uh, any way that I can escape from Alcatraz? Absolutely impossible, David. For those of you at home, if it makes you feel comfortable to think that my attempt to escape from Alcatraz is just a TV movie, or that the explosives that the bomb squad brought are just special effects, that's fine. But the guards and the audience outside will attest to the fact that these bars are real. This straitjacket is real. And the explosives that the bomb squad brought are very real and very dangerous. All of my escapes will be accomplished without the aid of video trickery. Many men have risked their lives attempting to escape from Alcatraz. Tonight, it's my turn.